We've been waiting a long time for the pandemic to end. For masks and restrictions and boosters and canceled plans and memes about public health officials to once and for all come to a close. But despite the fact that we long more than ever to put this all behind us, most of us have settled into the fact that the end of COVID looks less like a finale and more like a long rolling wave that sucks a little more optimism out of us each time it crests. And there's a lesson to be learned from the pandemic's slow and torturous non-ending. Because you see, part of the problem isn't actually the pandemic. It's a problem with how we think about endings. We love endings. Endings are fun. And sweet. This one left them all behind. And even when they're sad, they're meaningful. In school, we're taught that no essay is complete without a good conclusion. In sports, the score at the end is the whole point. Research shows our brains are wired to crave clear endings and are repulsed by inconclusive ones. And that's super helpful evolutionarily. If you're being chased by a lion, it feels better to know you'll either escape or get mauled than to imagine living in a state of, I might be about to get eaten, but I'm not sure. Most of us don't have to worry about getting eaten by lions, but we do have to face stressful deadlines and go through painful breakups. Counting on a concrete outcome gives us a sense of control and a source of hope. But when our obsession with endings gets out of hand, it can keep us from seeing the bigger picture. Take November 11th, 1918. That's the day that World War I, the so-called war to end all wars, ended. But the war to end all wars ended up leading to World War II, which people like to say was really just the last battle of World War I, though it would be hard to say it was the last battle when it led immediately to the Cold War, which itself sowed the seeds of the post-Cold War era, aka the post-post-war, aka the so-called end of history, which itself recently ended. I'm tired of letting myself indulge in the exasperation of the pandemic's drawn out attempt of an ending. We know from our own lives that there's rarely a clean finale to the madness, and this is no different. So maybe, instead of fixating on the end, the same thing to do is start asking ourselves, what do we want to happen next? But that's easier said than done. Think about it, you've been graduating college since the day you started it. Every breakup makes room for new love. The beginning of every job is a step closer to the end of your career, which is actually the start of your retirement. People like to say that when one door closes, another door opens, but there are no doors. Nothing is opening and closing. Life is just a hallway, an infinite hallway. And we're stuck on one of those airport moving walkways. Your only escape is to try running backwards, which will only get you detained by the airport security guard and given a stern lecture on the absurdity of trying to impose narrative on something so beautifully formless as life and our uncanny tendency to end up somewhere we didn't even know we were being led. When will this all end? Is the wrong question. 10 years from now, we'll just be waiting impatiently for a whole new set of disasters and uncertainties to come to a close. The best thing we can do is to embrace the endings that look like beginnings, the beginnings that look like endings, and the meaning that we find somewhere in the middle of it all. <laughs>